Hello everybody, welcome to Primus. This is B for Belarus, our program which we uh, together uh, conduct with Vlad Baranich. Vlad, hello. Hello. Vlad is a country consultant and media analyst and today we dedicate our program to a very fascinating though controversial topic which is women in Belarus who wears trousers in the Belarusian family and the country. Uh, the reason was that as Vlad prompted uh, women uh, sometimes consider themselves to be as commodities, as goods. This is very humiliating. This is, uh, and on the one hand, on the other hand, women take a special status in the in the Belarusian family and in society, claiming that they, like, there's a kind of a metaphor that uh, a man is an head and a woman is a neck. So it doesn't matter what a man thinks. The matter is the most important factor is in decision making and how life is arranged is how the neck feels uh, in the situation, what it's, uh, how it manages the whole situation in a hidden or an open way. So let's discuss this issue because uh, no matter what you think about political situation in Belarus, uh, about Lukashenko, about football, about food, but I have never seen a single foreigner in my life, whether, tell me your impression, Vlad, that would say, well, women in Belarus are ugly, are not uh, beautiful, are not attractive, so predominantly people, foreigners, who come to Belarus are so fond of Belarusians, Belarusian women, that they believe this is the biggest, the most important asset we have. Yes, asset yes, indeed. You know, there's no pun intended, of course, there is asset, but, you know, in my website, you know, expat.by, there is article, the last, uh, mm -hmm. the top is uh, about it's written by my business partner, Serge, and mm -hmm. uh, this, it is, uh, the name of that article is uh, uh, Belarusian women are the greatest uh, asset. <laughs> Because uh, it's really so. Uh, there is, uh, you know, there is article about that uh, uh, man from abroad coming to Belarus to marry Belarusian women. Yep. Well, because they have many values, uh, like uh, many positive things. Of course, the first thing you said, nobody says they are ugly because they are astoundingly beautiful. And very beautiful. Very beautiful. And I remember one point, uh, a, a British professor came to Minsk uh, somewhere in the beginning of the 2000s and uh, uh, he was uh, taking pictures uh, by stealth. I said, what are you doing? I'm taking pictures because uh, this every second woman deserves to be a model. And I would like to, to uh, have these pictures because I've never seen such a thing in my life. That's what he well, said. Actually, Actually, uh, should be noted that not women, uh, women, uh, it's mostly young uh, girls, so young women, because they somehow wither like flowers, you know, they're mm -hmm. stunningly beautiful when they flower, when they blossom, then, well, that's just because maybe society, maybe culture, they somehow wither away. But, um, you know, in the beginning of, the, of your introduction, mm -hmm. we should have said a little disclaimer that we're yeah. here two male chauvinists discussing this sensitive, because we should have not been blamed for by women that we discuss this. But like, actually, we are two two men discussing this question, and it's a, it's, it's normal. Well, I think that we uh, take this approach as observers, because yes. every time uh, you talk to foreigners, they uh, in the beginning of the conversation or somewhere in between say, "Well, but by the way, I heard that Belarusian women are so beautiful that uh, all my friends, colleagues, advise me to come to Belarus to." Admire them again. Would be would be nice to hear a female opinion about that. But well, that's here we are. We're, we with our show, so we talk about this together. So to continue this after this little disclaimer, um, it's really controversial, as you said. On the one side, women are so adored. Uh, our men also they value them. Yeah, Belarus, but do you believe that uh, Belarusian men adore, admire, and cherish Belarusian women, their wives, sisters, uh, mothers? Because you, you look at the uh, typical average Belarusian family. Usually, uh, the woman or mother 
uh, is a jack of all trades. She does a lot of uh, things in the household. She works. She takes care of kids. She takes care of the husband. So she's predominantly uh, overburdened with so many things that it's really a big puzzle how she remains female and uh, gentle, gentle and uh, and and charming at the same time. Yeah, feminine in this uh, yeah. uh, respect. I mean, uh, you know, uh, it's interesting uh, on, uh, again about controversy. On one side, uh, they try. We, we talk about uh, women's, you know, this is women's beauty. And uh, do male do men Belarusian men adore them? Well, they like to boast to for, say foreigners mm -hmm. that our women are the most beautiful in the world. That's I heard many times, and they're very proud of this asset. Again, less to say, but on the other side, uh, <clears throat> um, they are somehow neglected. That again, this. This uh, thing is inherent uh, not to Belarus only, but mm -hmm. post, uh, let's say, to Russia mm -hmm. as well, to post-Soviet uh, countries, mm -hmm. which uh, even I think in, in Baltic countries where they were, they have the same uh, heritage of the Soviet Union, cultural heritage. Polish and, ladies, Ukrainian, yes, Russian. We yes. have something uh, that is. You know, uh, there was uh, the, the, now once I read the article. Now there are many of them. It is called and quite uh, they show with fact that mm -hmm. in Soviet Union and in post-Soviet countries mm -hmm. we in fact had matriarchate. Mm -hmm. So it's just like power of women. Um, unspoken, maybe hidden, shadow power, but again it's matriarchate. Uh, men are everywhere on the front. Mm -hmm. I mean in the as, as presidents, as uh, prime ministers. Matriarchy. matriarchy. Matriarchy, yes, matriarchy. So uh, it's... Um, no, but uh, it's interesting again. cultural phenomena. Because right. So let's uh, consider that from the, from the perspective of the culture. So on the on the level of the family, right? So uh, men were supposed to be bread bringers, so they earners. They should er earn the living. At the same time, as we see in the Soviet Union, women also worked, and uh, in many cases they were they earned more money, they worked harder, and uh, they made careers. I couldn't say that. Uh, uh, there was there was kind of a glass ceiling for women in the Soviet Union. At the same time, they were paid less. Even now, women on the same kind of job position, they are paid about 25% less than men. So, uh, this male chauvinism still prevails. But, as uh, many foreigners argue, uh, Belarusian men undervalue and uh, discriminate against women, and they, we do not appreciate the beauty we have, because every time uh, like Belarusian women well, they marry foreigners. Oh gosh, they just you know, adore them. They treat them as as queens. And they, uh, as we graduate from linguistic university, we were even specially privileged by the beauty we had around. Because as a, uh, in the dormitory and the university, uh, males were far <laughs> very uh, very rare. So like you graduated very, from linguistic university. I graduated from uh, uh, philological. Philological, right? Philology from the so, state. Male, we have we more are, women. We are spoiled girls. by beauty. We did not like. It's like you know, like when you live in the uh, uh, lake uh, sea uh, side, right? And so you eat caviar every day. So you're yeah. sick and tired of caviar. Something like it's that. Like, then you're okay. So the girls are beautiful. Yeah, well, they're beautiful. So what? Come in natural way. We're in the forest, way. and right. so we, we so don't. You know, we don't. Yeah, we've got a lot of mushrooms around. So what? Right now, why do you believe that we really? we male is in Belarus, men in Belarus are spoiled to the point that we do not understand, we do not uh, recognize, cherish women as they, as every foreigner uh, does when uh, he or she, uh, he sees a Belarusian lady. I wouldn't say we're spoiled. But sim sim simply, it's like, you know, uh, we simply don't have alternative. We simply leave them on that. I mean, uh, what, what, what other option we yeah, have? Right we, 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 we just realize that when we go abroad. For example, mm -hmm. like in 1991 was the first time I ever in my life, it was Soviet Union at the time, I went mm -hmm. to the United States uh, in the mm -hmm. Students Exchange program. 
And I, at that time, I realized how mm -hmm. our women are beautiful mm -hmm. and other many cultural aspects I realized. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the, now the world is more open. So mm -hmm. our men, they watch TV or, you know, the internet. Now they can compare what kind of uh, you know, women in in uh, in other countries but again uh, if you if you watch tv uh on something like like internet they everywhere they share the claim glamour part let's say mm -hmm. of the of the picture something more beautiful part but again um uh, what uh, what is not surprising but what's peculiar about Belarusian women is the way they dress, clothes, style. Uh, even if a Belarusian woman uh, does shopping, yes. she doesn't yes. do shopping in a casual way. She dresses, she makes, uh, puts makeup on her face, she uh, does her hair in a way that uh, so she shows off in a way. Is it what kind? Why, how do you explain this situation when? Uh, Women in many cases in Belarus are overdressed for for the occasion they they are in. Like, yes. why do you need uh, this kind of so much pay so much attention to your appearance when you do mundane, average, daily routine work? You know, this thing surprises even uh, Czechs when I lived in Prague, mm -hmm. and they they made even special video about um, uh, women actually not in Belarus but in Ukraine in mm -hmm. Crimea actually, mm -hmm. and uh, so. But it was in here, they say, to the f former Soviet Union, all these countries are now independent. Mm -hmm. And uh, you didn't mention that they always own high heels. Mm -hmm. For example, if, if they see in Prague, they say if you see w women on high heels on Prague streets, they are either Russian or, or the Belarusian horse. or horse. Yes. And uh, that, that actually documentary which they made, mm -hmm. uh, it was about high heels. Mm -hmm. Why women um, wear this but this is beautiful you know, it's, uh, if, uh, every day yeah they, every day yeah, right. they only maybe not only run they do, just don't use <laughs> the sneakers just you know as, as, run, as shoes for sports but like in United States I was very much surprised to see that women in everyday life no matter mm -hmm. how how they dressed for business it's convenient they, they yeah, walk on streets on in, in in sneakers sneakers right and uh, here you, see, you mentioned in the beginning that uh, women here they consider them Themselves due to culture, mm -hmm. uh, they consider themselves as item for sale. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like uh, they have to present her as item for sale, uh, sell herself to not necessarily to men. I asked the women about that. Mm -hmm. I asked my wife, and uh, they say that uh, this is how they compete. It's so not they only see the for world. men. That's for they say it's for us. It's to make us more it's kind of a self-esteem. This is the way they boost their self-esteem in the situation when uh, to, there to, are, to, to are a few things to uh, express themselves in a different way. Because if they uh, dedicate uh, energy and attention to work or to career or to whatever area, that's one thing. But when you pay so much attention to your appearance, yes, it's, so you have to buy some stuff, right? So it's makeup stuff, you know, creams, clothes. You dedicate so much time to uh, the thing that we men, I personally ignore, but that's really, the result is uh, astounding, as you said, the result is great, I love it, I love what I see, but again, uh, it's it's a kind of free commodity for us, so this is the beauty, it's like you go to the forest, you enjoy the forest, this is a natural forest, nobody planted it, but uh, as a side effect, it's as a, like a picturesque uh, scenery, landscape around. Well, you know, it's a side effect indeed, because it's, again, the one of the, I don't know, maybe bad features of the former Soviet um, culture. What's, uh, again, uh, to what we're talking about, again, if some uh, woman would be listening to it, it's, I think somebody would be offended, because, you know, two male chauvinists, mm -hmm. they talk about women as item for sale, but here we talk about, again, about male pers from mm -hmm. the male perspective, and um, mm -hmm. that's, uh, the fact is, that, for mm -hmm. example, I have some statistics, and uh, since I work with mm -hmm. tourists, for with aliens coming mm -hmm. here, and, um, as country consultant, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of men, especially from Germany, mm -hmm. from uh, Italy, mm -hmm. 
other countries, uh, U.S. is not as presented now, but mm -hmm. uh, mostly from Europe and from Turkey mm -hmm. and from Arab countries, they come here for bright hunt. Let's say mm -hmm. they, you know, find. Uh, and they value our girls, our mm -hmm. women, as uh, their lifelong partners. So they, uh, at the same time, uh, so they're beautiful, at the same time they know how to manage a household, how yes. to cook, how to bring up kids, how to take care of their husbands. So they're like, again, they're universal. So uh, the question is, why are so few foreigners in Belarus if they know how uh, hot, how... Uh, uh, appealing, attractive Belarusian women are, because we have people who are like, yeah, well, they don't know much about it, so many people in the United States, they don't uh, make a difference between Ukrainians, Belarusians, Russians, or Poles even, and so they say, okay, we come here, and uh, most of the uh, men uh, come here not just to, to look for a bride or a, how a wife, they just for sex. Yes, that's correct, and in this respect, they are more affordable than uh, European women. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why Belarus is uh, often called as the Cuba of uh, Batista times. Batista. It's like uh, casinos mm -hmm. and uh, oh, whores. Casinos and whores, right. So it's... Uh, and and said, formally prostitution is, li is uh, banned. It's, it's prohibited in it Belarus. It is not prohibited, but it is not legalized. Let's <laughs> it's say. not legalized. Come on. Well, you cannot uh, have a you won't be, I mean, job description. If, 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 well, uh, unlike, like in Germany, uh, unlike in, in uh, at least they are not being uh, heads or you know hands not cut off like oh, in, yeah, in, in, uh, in 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 uh, in Muslim medieval countries. Medieval times. No, no, no. I mean like uh, in in like in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia it's right. forbidden. But here it is not legalized as business. So uh, women. That's can why uh, Arabs uh, come to different uh, countries uh, to do what uh, uh, other men do in their own uh, right. countries uh, and places. Right. right. So. In, in this respect, I mean, uh, in Belarus, many things are not uh, legally, let's say, for example, example, mm -hmm. we're talking mm -hmm. about women, uh, for example, of those men who are coming here to this country mm -hmm. and uh, they try to find a partner, lifelong mm -hmm. partner, no matter wife or mm -hmm. doesn't matter, maybe just a permanent uh, partner, but uh, they have to, f to be careful and they mm -hmm. often don't aware of uh, un the, under that innocent mm -hmm. look and mm -hmm. beauty, there is something sinister. Like, remember, there was this uh, scandal, it's on my website, there is a link to a very interesting, it was in mm -hmm. 2013, mm -hmm. when and, uh, there was competition Minsk, Miss Minsk, Miss Minsk. Mm -hmm. and uh, every prize place was won by uh, nightclub stri girls. strippers. Escort girls, right? Well, I'm not sure they were not escort girls; they were strippers. But, strippers. but uh, there are there, there are links to that in my website. Right. You know, there is an article and there is a link to to those pictures. There are many mm -hmm. pictures. I mean, mm -hmm. on, from uh, you know, even from such respectful in the article actually from respectful mm -hmm. European radio. Uh, Euro Radio, yeah, which Euro is Radio. From, sponsored by U e EU. Um, so it was big scandal that time. That you know, they, they're really yeah, usually beauty uh, contests are for uh, innocent girls yes, who that's, was that's, uh, show beauty, was feminine beauty, yeah, charm, Miss integrity. Minsk, Miss Minsk is really beautiful, out. and she looks so innocent. And there was uh, the second prize. I think went to mm -hmm. to the, the three of them. They, they have mm -hmm. pictures of them three of them and one of them was called Miss Friendship but actually her professional nickname was <laughs> Miss S so uh, can you imagine this it was uh, and, and nobody knew about it, but unless you know, until the, uh, uh, you know, bloggers mm -hmm. put this out and you know, published, and then you know, authorities, so Minsk authorities, mm -hmm. they simply harshed it down. Just they said nothing happened. They just took away their crowns, their prizes, right. and they say and said and they said to them, there was no competition. Forget about it. You're right. So <laughs> that's so funny story. I mean, it shows a lot about Belarusian uh, culture and right, political okay. culture. Uh, one event which is uh, widely celebrated uh, in Belarus and it is still a national holiday which is Mar March 8th Women's Day and many people feminists worldwide believe this is sh should be an international holiday in all the countries uh, but again 
again, we have, uh, of course, if you go to the roots of that particular holiday, it, uh, uh, you came across uh, Rosa Luxemburg right. and all these right. uh, uh, Bolshevik uh, ladies, uh, to put it mildly. But at the same time, if you do not congratulate women on the 8th of March, being a man, right, uh, <laughs> the probability of you being criticized or uh, even... Uh, uh, excommunicated is quite high. Why is it that uh, uh, women themselves believe this is an important holiday for them instead of uh, demanding the, this kind of treatment every day? Again, as I say, old habits die hard. For, for, for all this Soviet propaganda, they created this uh, they created this, uh, I don't know, say myth or it's kind of semi-religious holiday and actually it is day off mm -hmm. in, in Belarus yep. and probably in Russia, mm -hmm. I don't know, it used to be in Soviet time all over uh, these countries and um, you know, you say, uh, I, in this respect, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm more feminist <laughs> than some women are because in my family Mm -hmm. I nobody uh, I don't you know congratulate no my mother no my wife so this is not a holiday for you for me it's I uh, just kind of forbidden item it's like you know just to say no it's just nothing and they know that uh, I never never celebrate and it is uh, you know they, they celebrate maybe somewhere hidden from me but because <laughs> uh, my, my wife uh, you so know, you do not bring your wife flowers nope Nope. Okay. Actually, I never bring my wife flowers. I, I prefer some sweets. You know, something something you can also take part in. No, this is <laughs> irrational. But this, this is uh, I do that on a regular basis because I uh, this is the way I bring up my kids to show respect to uh, the mother and to women in general. That flowers is something uh, irrational. So so you give flowers, but so it's aesthetic value yeah. instead of being some materialistic prick that talks only about something that you put inside uh, your body. <laughs> Here we tread into a territory of a right. esoteric things, because I believe that there shall be living flowers, etc., right, etc., right, right, right. there's <laughs> bad energy and cut okay, flowers, etc. So it is a different question. But uh, talking about uh, this uh, 8th of March, I remember in, in school, remember we had uh, in English lessons, my dear, dear mommy, I love you very much, I wish you to be happy on the 8th of Come March. On. It's like, uh, right. it's like uh, you know, it's like in religious but schools. But that was part of would... propaganda. Yep. It's actually that That's what I mean. But again, women uh, carried the burden of daily routine life. Uh, they toiled. They were not paid enough, put equally. They were discriminated in many ways. Male chauvinists made decisions. And at the same time, there was like this kind of you no know, token. It's like, today we celebrate women. So women on the pedestal of fame, of admiration, and it's like we have all kinds of concerts and women dress up for the occasion, but that was hypocrisy. Uh, you know, why do you say they're being discriminated in payments? Where do you get these figures? As no, far as um, I know, some mm. women get more money now than... Right now, you know. Right, but, yes. But I mean, if you compare similar job positions in Belarus, there's kind of different uh, reports on that. And according to uh, the organizations that mm -hmm. uh, monitor that, they say that, like, male and female on the same job position, uh, usually women are underpaid. And that's Strange, why... Strange, because uh, we have, uh, like, if it is a state, uh, state uh, service or state enterprise. Yeah, it's uh, one thing. They have fixed, uh, fixed, uh, fixed tariffs, salaries. Fixed salaries, fixed tariffs on this. They call it. Uh, if it is mm -hmm. business, um, doesn't matter. I mean, uh, now nowadays I can hardly find any. Maybe there will be positions like teachers and school teachers, teachers mm -hmm. but uh, the same uh, salary will be with uh, men, mm -hmm. but simply men don't go there on such salaries. Mm -hmm. This is the reason when uh, women 
simply occupy such positions where so they eighty-seven percent of high school here's, uh, high school yes. uh, teachers are taken so by women. Here's eighty-seven percent. So here we, we can maybe we we have to talk here about discrimination, about admittance to jobs, mm -hmm. uh, not about salaries. Salaries are everywhere because they are fixed in their accountings. Uh, I mean, accounting list is everywhere. Okay, Vlad. So uh, this is kind of um, way to celebrate women and to uh, show respect. For example, one of the ways that uh, this feminism is getting popular in the West and uh, our uh, president and the government say, okay, let's have third of the parliament uh, women, third or some uh, quota for young men, a quota for regions, and that's how we ensure inclusiveness in decision making. So we have, uh, we used to have uh, a woman as head of presidential administration, a woman as a chairman of Central Election Commission, woman as a chairwoman of, this, of the biggest uh, state bank. We have uh, a lot of women around uh, the presidents. Uh, they are beautiful, they are smart, they make this information field where in which Lukashenko feels probably comfortable but he makes decisions within this field. So how do you evaluate, see the role of women in running the country? Well, first of all, let's divide two things. Lukashenko and his, uh, let's say, his uh, female employees mm -hmm. and uh, the rest of the country. Probably, I think, the, the reason that mm -hmm. uh, women are around Lukashenko in such positions, probably he feels like, you know, remember with Gaddafi, his best friend at mm -hmm. time, when his uh, best bodyguards uh, mm -hmm. were women, you know, these mm -hmm. tough women, mm -hmm. yep. and... Uh, so probably Lukashenko feels that these women are more faithful. They they won't betray him, and that's one of the features. Our they don't have political ambitions. Yes, and that's uh, that's how I think. I, I personally believe this is the reason. Again, uh, he he appointed twenty year old Miss Belarus yeah, to the parliament. Right. This is uh, the combination of many factors. First, she's young, yes. she's beautiful, and she, now she's a member of the parliament. Yeah, well, that's again. Uh, you can explain it. He simply, when he goes to the parliament and he sees these ugly faces, at least he can <laughs> put his eye on something, fix his eye, and feel comfortable. There but is but such nice girl there. You know, she's really right. beautiful. Do you believe that Lukashenko humiliated women by doing that, or he praised them and he awarded uh, them for uh, for like the role of women in the society? Because uh, many women see that as a humiliation. Okay. No, at neither of those, uh, because I said that uh, he pres he pursues his own agenda. He feels yeah, right. comfortable with that, and nobody care. And he doesn't care what other th people think about it. So it's mm -hmm. uh, it's his own taste. Let's say it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, as for other, well, uh, as I say, um, mm, generally society is uh, conservative. And uh, uh, we don't have this feminist movement as on the West. Mm -hmm. uh, in many uh, aspects, it's like uh, many other female rights or, say, gay rights or some other rights of, you know, like political rights. That's why when we, uh, last year, 2019, the word of the year was they, referring to uh, a, an entity that has not decided on his gender yet. <laughs> so oh, yeah. they. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> so if you talk us, to an average it, woman yes. or man in Belarus, they would just uh, laugh. You know, one of the good features in, the, is Be is in Belarus mm -hmm. were for foreigners who come here and they find who you know who know a little bit of culture of language especially they adore and they are really excited about political incorrectness in yep. Belarus because in fact it turns out that Belarus is more free in terms of speech than in any most free country in the West. That the political correctness killed a lot of discussion there. While we can yes. talk about these things, uh, I know sometimes I can uh, really see, uh, I wish I had this trade-off, because we cannot uh, discuss very many important political uh, civil society uh, legal issues about the, the participation in the running the country, while we can do that on religion uh, gender, ecological issues, and this is vice versa in the West. 
Yeah, that's strange. Well, that's because Belarus is uh, is this, this how to call mm-hmm. it? Uh, this uh, res- reservation of the old Soviet uh, <laughs> style of old Soviet culture, closed. In fact, it's closed societies. It Yet, is. of course, we have internet, etc. But on the mainstream, on the level of the government of the legal system, it is very closed. Well, system. do you believe that uh, Belarusians, if they had a free choice, would elect a woman president, or is it still the country that where women are not seen as uh, state persons, well, state? people experienced enough to run a country or run a big major company well it's uh, one of the heroes of the terminator he said the the probability is 10 percent you know it's like <laughs> well, you know, said. we even america has never elected a woman president yet. yes to say nothing about belarus um In certain, under certain circumstances, that would be possible. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember, remember when Gorbachev mm-hmm. was in power, and mm-hmm. he, at first time in mm-hmm. all the Soviet tradition, mm-hmm. he had his wife nearby, mm-hmm. and people were so, especially women, I remember when I was working at the factory, mm-hmm. and there were women workers, they they were so indignant about that, this Raika, they call it, you know, it's derogative for Raya, you know, Raisa, Raika, Raisa. Raika this right again there you know they were so angry about her being uh, on, on uh, mm-hmm. everywhere and they thought that she was thinking that I uh, mm-hmm. uh, was thinking about uh, instead of uh, Gorbachev etc so that culture uh, is not gone unfortunately you know uh, this this Soviet culture has mm-hmm. preserved here in Belarus and this attitude is very much alive uh, well, but uh, if we're, uh, not, we're not now talking about like uh, material uh, profit making or uh, value but uh, intangible assets in terms of who brings more uh, fame more uh, brand recognition in the world Domrachova three times Olympic champion uh, Alexeyeva uh, she is Nobel Let's Prize begin winner with Korbut, Olga Korbut Olga Korbut in the beginning you have uh, outstanding freestyle champions in this area you have uh, who else Get Семейня. You have women who are very, very uh, famous worldwide. Now you have Sabalenka, you have Azarenka, people who were like at the top of tennis, world tennis, and people watch tennis. And I remember talking uh, to some guys in Latin from Latin America, and uh, we shared our passion for tennis. And she, oh, I know Belarus because Sabalenka and Azarenka that time uh, are from Belarus. So you must have something well, in there. You can you can see more women on porn uh, covers like Fame Joy, etc. Actually, actually, I have their links. Uh, no, but do you know any names of Belarusian porn artists? I don't know. Well... Maybe they are there from Belarus, but they no. hide there. Uh, well, we don't have our origin. Chichalina, of course. No, but, we don't. Uh, probably this all in the in the future. I don't know. No, but but uh, now we have the situation when in sports, women are very good uh, at bringing value to the brand of the country and uh, our society, right? We have literature. A lot of uh, outstanding women. We have artists. Uh, ladies who paint wonderful things. We have photography. We have uh, clothes design. We have many, many, many people, and they are like in this artistic uh, area of activities. Yeah, in the in the area of beauty. Yep. In the beauty area. So that's what. Well, but the whole world now is uh, values individualism, beauty. Uh, you just don't sell uh, crude material stuff. You add some value by individuality, personality, some artistic uh, embroidery or something. That's what uh, Belarusian women are famous that's, for and strong at. That's why I put a headline on that article about women. The Belarusian women are the greatest asset of Belarus. <laughs> 
So, uh, so you mean do not? You don't mean like acid as commodity as goods? No, no, for no. Sale. In all respects, you mean that acid that brings a lot of material and intangible we, value to the economy, to the society, and the governance. So, I do not see the influence of the, our wonderful women on governance. Moreover, the inf- impact is rather negative because there are many women, and there are women if they especially come from the province. Yeah. And they are given special privileges. They are given material status. They are given some so a lot of carrots to ensure 100% loyalty. So this kind of status uh, makes women reluctant to develop critical thinking, to challenge a man on an equal footing. They rather tend to uh, caps- encapsulate the political processes and make them hidden from the public eye. Well, because women are more conservative. It's nature of especially mature women because they it's nature of like say born uh, natural born nature mm-hmm. they uh, the since they preserve the family and they uh, notice uh, such dare devils like men mm-hmm. who are, you know Russian where mm-hmm. angels dare not to step Stand like right, you know right. this mm-hmm. saying says right. and uh, again if you take women from province mm-hmm. uh, the province of Belarus is very 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 conservative yep, and it is. Uh, it's like uh, especially when I uh, live in the dormitory people from the province who uh, got uh, places in the dormitory many of them uh, want to just went wild because they say wanted to experiment yes. uh, urban life in all yes. its Correct. not beauty but uh, probably ugliness yeah. but they wanted to explore all of them say yes. oh gosh we could not afford doing that yes. in the countryside but now we are free nobody observes us so we can go wild yes it's uh, they were unprepared for let's say free life of uh, freedoms right. of that's right. the big city that's right that's correct so, finally, let's uh, conclude, Vlad. So, who wears trousers in the Belarusian uh, society and, and Belarusian state? Women or men? If you want to empower more women to make decisions, or you believe that we have this unique cultural balance of interests, of four of uh, strengths and weaknesses that uh, we just should learn and not try to change? Well, at least men don't wear skirts here. We don't know Scotland, so... Well, come on. <laughs> joke. <laughs> well, you say about trousers, because trousers... No, but this is a set expression. That's I know, I know. Right. That's why I make pun. I right. like puns, you right. know, this made on uh, verbs. And Humor this. is what makes yes. our life tolerable. Yes. So, um, so far, as to conclude, Belarus is very... Well, uh, conservative society and uh, change is hard and for women it's very on one side it is very hard field but mm-hmm. at the same time it is a very open field where they can have a lot of opportunities in the future when mm-hmm. uh, this society becomes free mm-hmm. and you know uh, who knows maybe we'll have uh, our first free president as a woman who knows so this is a uh, I wish it was anybody, but I wish we had free and fair elections. I would gladly vote for that young girl in the parliament. Uh, if she turns libertarian, yes. right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your input and your participation in the program, guys. Uh, we had this, that was another program before Belarus. We uh, covered the issue women in Belarus who wear the trousers in the Belarusian family. Uh, please, uh, your comments in Facebook, in all. Uh, uh, our uh, information and communication platforms are kind of welcome. Please, uh, we're looking forward to your topics, your themes, and Vlad and I would be happy to share our humble opinions and observations on what's going on in our country. Uh, definitely, we would like to make it uh, specific, to make it uh, identifiable in the wide range of cultures, identities, uh, statehoods around the world. We love our country, but we love freedom, we love science, and we love truth, most of all. Yes, I agree. Thank you. See you later. See you uh, in a week or two. Goodbye. Goodbye.